Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. People new to boa keeping often make a number of mistakes. Today I'm going to discuss these common mistakes. If you can avoid them, you'll be well on your way to keeping boas like a seasoned pro. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you want to learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming boa videos. The first beginner mistake is not doing your proper research before acquiring your boa. And this applies to a couple different areas. The first and probably the most important is to understand the husbandry and other requirements that your boa is going to need. Make sure you can provide them and make sure you have the setup in terms of the enclosure, heating and other accessories in place before you get your boa. The other area to research is all of the many different types of boa constrictors that are available. You know, between morph boas and locality boas, we're talking about probably hundreds, if not thousands, of different possibilities, with you know prices ranging anywhere from fifty dollars up to many thousands of dollars. So make sure you understand the boas that are out there and what type that you're looking for to better inform your selection of your pet boa. The second beginner mistake to avoid is buying a boa on impulse. So as I mentioned, it's important to do your proper research and understand the boa or boas that you're looking for that will satisfy your requirements. When you go to a show, there's likely to be thousands and thousands of animals there, and it can be kind of overwhelming as far as you know picking one of them to take home. In addition, you may not know the particular seller, so it's always a good idea to go to a show where a seller that you know and can trust is going to have animals available if you want the best chances of, of success. Other venues where you can pick up a boa include boa rescues, and these are often overlooked, and there's often very healthy and perfectly good animals available at local humane societies that need new homes. But if you're going to go the rescue route, make sure you're getting a healthy boa. It might be tempting to try to rehome a boa which has been neglected and not properly cared for, but unfortunately these animals will often have lots of health issues that require a veterinarian and typically a lot of money to spend on vet bills. In addition, some boas from uh, some not so reputable uh, pet stores or you know boas which have been kept and neglected it might be tempting to rescue them but unfortunately you'll inherit all of the medical issues that you'll need to solve and when you buy an unhealthy boa from a non-reputable pet store unfortunately this only enables them to go out and get another poor animal that's going to get the same treatment so you know sometimes rehoming these sick boas really doesn't do anybody any good in the end and then one final thing to consider, I strongly recommend you do not buy a wild caught boa as your first boa. So that would be another newbie mistake. You want to get a captive bred boa. And typically these days, you know, greater than 95% of boas on the market, including virtually all morph boas, are going to be captive bred. But sometimes I see wild caught uh, true red tail boas, which are considerably less expensive than the captive bred. But if you buy one of these animals, it's, it can be extremely difficult to get them acclimated, and you can easily spend a lot of money on vet bills uh, to get a boa that's healthy. The third beginner mistake is not allowing the proper acclimation and quarantine period for your new boa once you bring it home. So when you get your new boa, it's understandable, you're really excited, you want to take it out and take pictures and share pictures with everyone. But really, a new boa needs time to acclimate and you should spend at least the first week minimally handling the boa if you handle it at all. So just give the boa space to adjust to its new home and its new enclosure. Make sure that you have the ideal husbandry, of course, um, but you want to minimally handle your boa for the first week. In addition, you should always quarantine animals if you have other reptiles at home. So you want the animals to be in a completely separate room away from any established uh, captives that you're currently caring for. It might be tempting to skip this if your boa looks healthy, but boas can be carrying different diseases that they can spread to your other reptiles and they cannot be showing any symptoms. And probably the most, one of the most prevalent uh, conditions are mite infestations and it's very easy for your boa to spread mites 
to your established animals and then you know trigger a mite infestation that can be extremely difficult to eradicate. So don't skip the quarantine. At a very minimum, you should quarantine for three months and preferably six months before you move your boa into your main collection room. The fourth beginner mistake has to do with feeding. And the first part of this is if you feed too soon after buying your new boa. You typically want to give the boa at least a week to adjust to its new home before you offer any food. The second main mistake is feeding your boa too much. And the older literature is rife with inaccuracies about how often you're supposed to feed boas. You know, many books claim that you should feed every week. For, uh, for most boas, every week is way too much to feed a boa. So typically you want to feed baby boas up to two years old, anywhere from every 10 days to every two weeks. Uh, Sub-adult boas age two years to four years old, you typically want to feed every two to three weeks. And then most adult boas you want to feed about once every four weeks. Um, a lot of beginners will often not feed enough. You know, they're, they're so concerned that they're overfeeding their boa, they end up underfeeding it. You know, they might feed a baby boa once every four weeks. But you want to feed so that you see slow, steady growth. And by slow, steady growth, you're probably looking at anywhere from six inches to a foot and a half of growth per year. One final newbie feeding mistake is to feed live food. And you know, there's a misconception that boas want to eat live rodents and somehow this is more natural. But the truth is that 99% of boas will eat frozen thawed prey items. This is more humane as well as a lot safer for your boa. So don't make the mistake of feeding live food items to your boa if your boa will eat uh, frozen thawed rodents. The next beginner mistake is to use an inappropriate caging. And the most common inappropriate cage that's used for snakes are glass fish tanks with screen lids. There are far more appropriate cages for snakes than these glass fish tanks, which tend to not hold enough heat and humidity. And also psychologically, they don't offer much privacy for the snakes, as well as they're typically not very escape proof and the snake can often just push the screen lid off and escape. Although a fish tank can make an okay starter cage, I would highly recommend you look into getting a dedicated plastic snake cage or a rack system once you're able to get the uh, funds for that. Additional housing mistakes that beginners sometimes make include cohabitating where you have more than one boa in the same cage, as well as not having enough hiding places. So you don't want to keep two boas together unless you're breeding them, and you want to have, make sure to have plenty of hiding places for the boa to hide, both on the hot side and the cool side of the enclosure. The next group of mistakes that beginners often make have to do with the husbandry conditions. So you want to make sure to maintain a precise environmental conditions in the boa's enclosure. And a rule of thumb is to have a hot side of 90 degrees and a cool end of 75 to 80 degrees. It's important to have a gradient so that the animal can select where it feels the most comfortable and to have hiding places on both the hot side and the cool side. And it's really important that you monitor the temperature to make sure that it's in the desired range. I highly recommend using one of these laser gun type thermometers to, to monitor your boa's temperature range. In addition to temperature, the humidity is important. You want to maintain a relative humidity of between 60 and 80 percent for most boas, which is considerably more humid than the uh, ambient humidity for most houses. So. Um, if you need to add humidity, there are a number of ways you can do this using humidification devices or by spraying down the enclosure. In addition, the heat source is really important. A lot of people will use inappropriate heating sources. The two most common are any type of bulb, like a light bulb or a ceramic heat emitting bulb. So these devices are, they get far too, far too hot and they dry out the cage far too much for boas. Uh, in addition, another really bad choice of a heating device for a snake or for pretty much any reptile is a hot rock device. And these were really common in the 80s and I thought they had been eliminated, but unfortunately people are still making and selling these hot rocks. They get way too hot and they can end up burning your reptile and they're really bad uh, for almost all reptiles. So you definitely want to avoid hot rocks for a heat source for your boa constrictor. 
The next beginner mistake is acquiring too many boas too fast. And when a lot of people get into boas, they get like really obsessed with it and boas are such cool animals, they can be somewhat addictive. I mean, I know that myself. But a lot of people get in, they get their first boa, and then they immediately go out and they get another one. And then a month later, they get another one. And pretty soon they've got like a dozen boas. And the boas are babies, they're growing, they're gonna need more food as they get bigger, they're gonna need larger enclosures. So really think twice before buying too many boas too fast. You wanna make sure that you're able to provide the needs that they have. Another beginner mistake is worrying about breeding your boas too soon. So a lot of people will get into the hobby and they decide that they, they're gonna buy pairs of boas even though they've never kept them before and they wanna set up to start breeding them. And while breeding boas is fine if you're committed to it, really when you're starting off, you shouldn't worry about that. You should worry about just keeping the boas, just enjoying them as pets. And in the past, there was a lot of emphasis in the reptile hobby on breeding, like back in the 80s and 90s. This is before there was a lot of breeding going on. And you know, a lot of, spe a lot of reptiles were hard to get, so it made sense to encourage everybody to breed. But these days, there's really an excess of a lot of types of reptiles, including a lot of the more common types. So there's really no point for everybody to be breeding. And if you focus on breeding to the exclusion of enjoying the animals as a pet, you're really going to miss out. So I would say that if you get into boas and you've been keeping them for a few years and you really like them and you really want to think about breeding, at that point it makes sense. But you shouldn't really worry about breeding from day one. You really should worry about getting the experience, just you know, caring for boas and keeping them as pets before getting into breeding. And so the last mistake that beginners sometimes make is underestimating the, the commitment of a boa. So although boas compared to other pets are relatively low maintenance and relatively easy to maintain, they are relatively long lived and it's not uncommon for them to exceed 20 years in lifespan. So you're gonna have to be providing them their needs for 20 years, which is a pretty good chunk of a human lifespan. You're gonna have to be providing food and housing and you know vet bills if necessary. Uh, so don't underestimate that when you buy a boa now as a baby, you might have it 20 years from now. And make sure that you're willing to put in that commitment before you get the boa. So that was my list of some mistakes that newbies make when they get into boa keeping. So hopefully you can avoid these mistakes and have a better experience with keeping boas. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me via social media. I hope this video was helpful and enjoy your boas.